morning, good afternoon, good evening uh, across the globe. Uh, welcome to the Global Innovation Management Institute's Think Tank. Uh, we run this meeting every week. We talk about innovation trends which are happening that change the world, whether it's robotics or AI or cognitive science and other things. We talk about innovation management, new ways to make things go so that you can do bigger and bolder things faster. Bigger. You know, we have this last part which we talk about is innovation in different parts of the world. And, and, and we learn from that. Today, we, we are going to have a great speaker, um, Ken, Ken Merkel. And he's been talking about exponential organizations, but also how to help leaders uh, actually make that real. And so this is partly part of innovation management and also the trend of exponential organizations simultaneously, simultaneously together. So we're going to be in for a great treat. Um, Enrique, why don't you um, introduce our speaker? So let's add Enrique to the table. Enrique has brought our speaker. Enrique, please um, uh, let us know who our speaker is and um, why everybody should be paying attention to this. Sure, sure. Thank you so much, HP. Well, uh, you know, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Enrique Mazzoni from Lima, Peru. Today, we are presenting Ken Merkel from Alberta, Canada. Uh, actually, he's an experienced transformational leader and coach. He's also a serial entrepreneur and keynote speaker that shifts mindsets and cultures towards compelling futures. Uh, he's an active dreamer that knows how to inspire organizations to create a collaborative vision for their future and how to execute on realizing those visions. Uh, he's also the creator of the Sci-Fi Hive methodology and a career veteran of at transformational organization change. So, you know, we are glad to have Ken today. And Ken, you know, the floor is, is yours. Please, go ahead. Thank, thank you, Enrique. I'm just going to uh, share my screen here and we'll get going. Ken, while you do that, just uh, maybe you are in Alberta, Canada. Yes, I'm in Alberta, Canada. Yeah. And, is that uh, about like Lake Louise? Are you in the mountains or are you? Uh, we're about, we're no quite north. So we're about uh, five, six hours from the mountains, but uh, uh, try to get out to the mountains in the winter every year, do a little skiing. It's one of the most beautiful places in the world where yes, it is. Ken is from. Um, if anybody gets a chance to travel there, um, you'll see it. Swiss chalets everywhere and, and amazing things. And where are you physically located right now? Uh, is, so I'm in Bo actually in Beaumont, just outside of Edmonton, uh, okay. the, the the capital city. So, um, yeah, we're quite quite a bit north. So we we usually have quite harsh winters, although with climate change, it actually hasn't been too bad the last couple of years. And Ken, you've been doing this coaching and work around the world, or mainly yeah. In Canada? Yeah, around the world. Yeah, so yeah. From, well the, from the very north part of the Americas. You are yeah. actually reaching out all, all across the globe. That's that's fantastic. Because I think yeah. the topic you're talking you're talking about is well needed, um, and I think people should be paying attention. Just just one guidance to everybody as you listen. You know, most of us think we have to do everything on our own and figure things on our own. And trust me, um, there are people who have seen some of the mistakes that you don't need to make, and some people can see things, pattern recognition, and other things before you you see it. And so coaching and and the specific topic of growth are critical. So I'll let you start, Ken, and then we'll come back to a yeah. few of Yeah, and, and it, it, I'll, I'll talk in my presentation specifically about some very important aspects of really being able to look ahead. Um, so as mentioned, I'm Ken Merkel, and uh, down in the left-hand corner there, I'm assuming everybody can see my screen, is my Momoji. Um, so that's a cartoon representation of me. And you'll see why that's important here a little bit later. So our massive transformational purpose, which every organization should have, is to inspire imaginations that will change the world. So I'm not going to be talking to you about innovations today, but I'm really going to be talking to you about how do you kickstart a culture of innovation across your organization? Uh, so you might be familiar with Peter Drucker's famous phrase that culture eats strategy for breakfast. And that's true, but organizations are facing even greater challenges with exponential advancement of technology, 
new business models and democratization of access to that technology is going to bring new players to the table that are competing against your organization. So no longer do you need to be a government or a giant corporation or sector leader to completely disrupt the sector. You know, we saw it with Netflix disrupting the movie industry, streaming music disrupting the record industry, and we see startups disrupting automotive and space industry. So how do you kickstart an organization-wide culture of innovation? So the sci-fi hive methodology, it's an innovative process designed to remove barriers to human thinking and bring people together to define their own new utopian future. Now, a future that everyone in your organization believes in and drives toward because they helped create it. So we do this by merging science fiction or sci-fi and hive mind collaboration. Now, sci-fi is a genre of speculative fiction that typically deals with imaginative and futuristic concepts and often explores the potential consequences of scientific, social, and technological innovations. Now, Hive Mind is a shared or group intelligence that emerges from collaboration and collective efforts and competition of many individuals. Now, Hive Mind strongly contributes to the shift of knowledge and power from the individual to the collective. And so I'm going to play a little video here next and thumbs up on screen if you can hear it. I recently participated in this amazing sci-fi um, hive experience um, that was organized by um, EXO Execute for eight hours. That really seemed like two scientists, health tech investors, medical technology professionals from all over the world collectively shared ideas about the future of healthcare on a global scale. I have always believed in the power of imagination because if we can see it, we can build it. So thank you EXO Execute for helping the world do just that. Thanks. So creating the Sci-Fi Hive methodology is the culmination of years of experience and learning that all led to a great understanding of humans and group dynamics and how to release people from things that hold us back from innovating, imagining, and believing in different futures. You now, it started for me back in the 90s with the creation of horsepower metrics, along with the author of a book called Primal Management, Paul Hare. Now, this book focused on measuring and advancing leadership skills in motivating teams based on human primal needs and our brain chemistry. Now, as humans, we have some conflicting primal needs that both drive us to innovate, but also to remain static. And these are built into our genetic generations ago to help us survive when we were in the Serengeti being chased by tigers. Um, over the years of applying that science of humans myself in real world situations, I learned a lot about shifting a culture, the power of using collaboration to bring a group together to define their own future. Now, I overlaid this with uh, many different models to shift organizational structures and supporting transformational thinking. Then uh, at Singularity University, I was introduced to the idea of science fiction thinking as a way to break down personal biases and barriers. Uh, during a course on transformational change, there's a case study about how Lowe's used futurists and professional artists to create comic visions of future products as a means to gain buy-in to new and innovative ideas. Now, I thought it was an interesting idea, but it still didn't help organizations as a whole shift their culture. It was done by a small group. And so uh, by applying my knowledge of human behavior, learning from collaboration models, I started testing out a model with people in sessions, about 70 people, live sessions. Now, our first tests were with groups that were primarily information technology experts, but we noticed that many of their features focused only on that sector, on the information technology solutions. So we realized we had to diversify the groups. Uh, so then I joined a global exponential change group called OpenXO. And the pieces really started to connect then. So OpenXO has a sprint model and the idea of edge teams or teams that work at the edge of an organization that innovate and create new ideas and products. And again, it works great to innovate, but it focuses on a small group in the organization. And as well, the exponential message they promote is that technology and business models and global change are advancing exponentially. And if your organization doesn't do something now, you will be disrupted. 
Now, that's true for sure, but humans don't really like to be told that what we're doing and what we're successful at right now is going to eventually lead to our demise. So we need to make that determination on our own and replace that message with a more positive message. So I started using the sci-fi hive model with some diverse groups from areas all around the organization. And not only did it create this positive vision that everybody bought into, uh, but there was immediate uh, kickoff of a massive innovation cultural shift overnight because we had such a large portion of the organization involved in these workshops. Now, in our local in-person markets, early tests showed massive impact for organizations. But then COVID came along. And a month into COVID, with everyone locked down, OpenXO did a huge global conference. And probably one of the first global virtual conferences that happened during COVID. And I was asked if I could do something at the conference, so I transformed the sci-fi hive process to work online to run a massive sci-fi hive across five different global challenges. And I wasn't sure how it was going to work, but the results were amazing and extremely exciting. Most of the people involved said it was the most transformative session they've ever attended and wanted to participate in more sci-fi hives. So that shift from in-person sci-fi hives to virtual allowed us to bring together a much, much larger and way more diverse groups of people. And that accelerated the transformational thinking and produced better innovations. Since then, we've run sci-fi hives with organizations all over the world, uh, in the healthcare sector, elder care, tourism sector, with municipal governments and the citizens within a municip municipality. And we even ran some global sci-fi hives to tackle major global challenges like healthcare and uh, monetization of data. So that brings us to today. Um, that model has been proven and I need to make it available to more people if I really want to achieve my MTP of inspiring imaginations that'll change the world. So I'm going to give you a sneak peek today of the Sci-Fi High platform and certification program that allow anyone to run sci-fi highs, both in your organization or with your clients or external stakeholders, and kickstart a transformational culture and truly go where you've never gone before. I believe that sci-fi high somehow awakens us from our routine and put us in position to think out of the box, to dream, to imagine the future and to to help our community to shape it the way that it will be better for everybody. So first we'll talk a bit about the education program. So there's several roles participate in a sci-fi hive and we created training and certification for the, the main role, the leader of a sci-fi hive swarm, a beekeeper. So the beekeeper is responsible for leading the sci-fi hive process and converging the experience down to actionable initiatives and results. So in an immersive nine week part-time course, so it's about 48 hours a week, you're gonna learn how to configure the swarm in the platform, how to lead the other roles in the process. So there's facilitators, subject matter experts that bring in, you would bring in to help expand thinking and, and there's ways to access those experts through the OpenXO community. Um, the queen bees who participate in the hive rooms to support the other participants and the participants that are in the hive teams, which are what we call the breakout sessions or the breakout teams inside of the, the hive swarm. And you'll learn about the stages of a sci-fi hive. And as a team, you're going to, as part of the course, you'll lead a real sci-fi hive. Now, it can either be a global one or one with course participant organization and develop the results. So you're going to identify organizational transformational stars. So you'll really see during a swarm who the stars are in the organization at least the, the innovative stars. Um, you'll learn about some programs to overcome organizational barriers or potential organizational structure shifts, uh, develop some initiatives to continue to promote the innovation culture, and create a roadmap of potential initiatives from the comics to work towards your 20-year vision starting now. Hi, my name is Lisa Garcia and I work uh, around the world with entrepreneurs that are developing technology, innovations, inventions that they would like to commercialize. Typically, I work with scientists and researchers and engineers, um, both domestically and internationally. Uh, I work for the National Science Foundation and Virginia Tech. 
I had the great pleasure to participate in the Sci-Fi Hive, and it was an amazing experience. And it really got my mind thinking about ways that I could innovate on the current model that we're using to train entrepreneurs. And I, I just would highly recommend it to anybody. It's an opportunity for a large group to break into small groups and bond around topic areas and really get to know each other and a great way to look to the future and the art of the possible. Two thumbs up. So now I'm going to run through a quick demo of the platform as an administrator, a beekeeper and a participant. So they're all a little different. Uh, so I'm going to start first with the admin console, show you how easy it is to set up a swarm. So swarm is what we call a workshop. Um, so everybody can see the administration console now. Thumbs up. Yeah. Uh, so if we're creating a new swarm within the platform, you just right click add swarm and that will create a new swarm for you. And you just name it. And that's all you really have to do to get it started. Um, you can set a participant limit. Now there's this, this option to make it global, which is grayed out because we really want to work with anybody who wants to do a global challenge, uh, sort of work together. So you would work through us to do a global challenge. Then uh, you'll also notice that if you go to the sessions, it automatically sets up some default sessions. So the process of a sci-fi hive has has several stages within it and so it by default will set those up and usually the explore session is about an hour and it's done a week before the main session uh, when you come back into the main session you share your results um, you, and then you start your story development and that session is usually about four hours and then either the same day or the following day we usually prefer to do the following day because your brain starts to melt after four hours um, we go into comic prototyping where you actually develop a digital version of your comic book. And then about, uh, depending on whether or not you get a professional comic book made or you're just presenting the results a month or two months later, you, you do a results session. And so for, you can feel free to adjust these sessions wherever you want. We have the recommended sessions, which you learn about in the training, but we have done these in as little as one hour. For each of these sessions or each session that you want, you have to just set the start time and end time and you can set up and there's some default emails uh, to send out automatically send out invite emails so it'll send them out a week before the session starts with calendar invites uh, and then a reminder email will, can go out an hour before if you turn this on it happens automatically nothing that you need to do uh, then for participants Within the whole system, once you have an ID, that ID works in any of the versions of the platform. So if you already have an ID like I do, when I enter it in to add a participant, it will notice that I'm already there. And all I have to do is set up what, uh, what role I'll be playing. You can also import uh, entire lists of, of participants in here quite easily. Then you have to set up your hives or your teams. So we usually put between six and eight people on a team. And so you want to add however many teams that you want. And that's all you have to do to create your teams. And the next thing you want to move your members into the teams. So over on the last screen, you can just drag and drop your members onto teams. Again, that can all be imported. Um, the main thing that we focus on is to try and make as diverse teams as possible. Uh, the more diverse, the better. We've had some where we've had 12-year-olds and 80-year-olds in one room, and it was amazing what happened in there. Um, so that, and I know I'm going to run through it really fast. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but um, that's about it for admin console to set up uh, a swarm. And then we get into the beekeeper. So in the beekeeper console, this is the person who's leading the sci-fi hive. When you first go into the platform, you'll see all the swarms that you've been invited to and the role that you play in it. And if you're a participant, what team you're on. So you'll see that that test one that I just made and put myself in hive, hive one is there already. Uh, but I'm going to go into an example and show you what a beekeeper sees. So as a beekeeper, 
the platform set up to walk you through from start to finish a sci-fi hive. So you just start working your way through from the first one to the last one and check mark them as you go along. So for each section, there's instructions for you. Um, and there's the idea of like video conferencing is built right in this. And I'm going to show you, but you won't see me because my camera is already being used for the Zoom. So that the camera will fail. Um, but there's a swarm room or the main swarm room. This is where people go to when they come into the session. They come into the main swarm room. And you can pull all of the other people into the swarm room as well when you invite participants. And then you present a video. And so the my me emoji that I talked about earlier, this is where he'll show up and he will present the video for you and walk people through what the instructions for the next section to your sci-fi eye So I'm going to stop that. Uh, and then you start the breakout for each section. And when you start the breakout, it sends everybody out to their hive rooms. And each hive room has their own video conference room. And uh, we can join their video conference room. Sorry, I'm in this hive room. First, I have to join the room. So when I join a hive, so as a beekeeper, I can see what all of the other hives are doing. When I join their hive, I can see all of their tabs and all the stuff that they're working on, and I can join their Hive room. Once I've done visiting them, I just end the Hive visit, return back to the main swarm room, and when I end the breakout, it pulls everybody back in into the main session. Uh, some of these sections also have an additional item, which is sharing. So we like them to come back and share and cross-collaborate with the larger group after each section. And so for each one, there are sharing instructions and there's the ability to actually play some of the stuff and show some of the stuff that they've shared. The different teams create. Um, and behind all of this, there's a whole gamification. So they get points. So you get points for everything that a participant does. When you share something that the participants made, you can actually pick uh, and provide them some points just by clicking. And so everybody gets points and it's a gamified as they go through the process. Um, and so you just work your way from top to bottom through the whole process and tracking where you are along the process. And that's really all there is to leading a uh, leading a sci-fi hive swarm. And, you know, I, I say that's really all there is, but it's really about facilitating and helping people expand their thinking, joining them in their rooms, getting them to collaborate and talk. So a lot of it is about facilitating the conversation and expanding their thinking. And I mentioned facilitators earlier. A lot of times we'll bring experts from within their sector, as well as technology experts from outside of their sector to get them to think about not just their business now, but what do they do with the assets they have and create new business or connect to adjacent businesses. So that's all there is to the um, the being a bee a beekeeper and the beekeeper interface. So I'm going to go back to my swarms and show you the fun part, which is the participant. So as a participant, this is what the interface looks like. And you have the two swarm rooms, the main swarm room and your hive room as well. Just like we always do, you can see which participants are at the event. And then as you work through the process, it starts with exploration. And this will walk you through the process of exploring future trends, and and it's got a leaderboard here and so it's a bit of a competition with your team members to explore and learn different things uh you know that might be related to your industry or that you technologies you could use to expand your industry or even different business models and then you store those things and share them with your team and we get you to split them out into different um different types of knowledge and um, you learn about that from the Memoji as part of the process. And as you save it, you'll see the leaderboard jumps up and I gained a point in the background and uh, I'm sharing future visions. So once you've done your exploring, you come back together, share your exploration 
and you start future scaping as a team. This is really just brain dumping and brainstorming. So you can add new stickies onto here. Your whole team works in here at the same time. And you add stickies, you help develop out each other's ideas and collaborate on the ideas. And you're really brainstorming what do you want your future to be right now? And then we overlay this all with a hero's journey story. So then the next phase you get into your story development. And this is the layout of a hero's journey story. And together you're gonna build out your characters, your call to action, all the components of a hero's journey story. And this all happens as well after some a little bit of training on developing a hero's journey story. And finally, into the comic prototyping. So inside of the comic prototype, you, um, you can build out your actual comic book. And as you can see, there's title pages and we get into the different panels and you can add in images and captions and all kinds of things in here. There's a lot that you can do in here. So we also train uh, one person in each room to be a queen bee. And so they, we teach them how to use the platform so they can help everybody else in the platform uh, as they're working through the process. And in the end, you have generated a full comic book, um, which you can then use either just as part of your presentation or what we do in our corporate sci-fi hives is these comic books go off to an actual comic artist and we create a physical comic book for the organization. Um, we did some work with Bulgaria airports and Bulgaria tourism, and they have those comics hanging up all over the airports in Bulgaria now. So that's all there is to the different platforms. Let's just get back to the presentation. Um, now, we're actually unveiling the platform on Friday. And if you're interested in coming and playing around inside of the platform, you can sign up at scifihive.com forward slash global. And uh, Friday morning at nine o'clock mountain time is when that's happening. part of the project, we invited 25 uh, partners from externally and more than 100 employees. So we worked with 135 people around uh, who worked in 13 groups. Uh, and to produce uh, these comic strips, uh, we, we had an immense uh, research first. So we had uh, more than 600 research topics which were covered by the teams, everybody did research for herself and himself uh, to get ideas um, and all these things then went into these comic strips uh, which, which we produced. Um, but this is a kind of a start, a very playful start because normally we live in the here and now uh, and it's somehow an exercise uh, to really look into the future, to look 20 years ahead um, and we take it up from these results, from these experiences and then go back to the here and now and define very precisely how do we move into this direction. Uh, and we come up with different technology projects, with business development projects where we think we do the right steps right now to be successful in the future and to create an interesting future. And then, so that from that swarm workshop process and the resulting comic books, what we do is we find the innovative champions from around the organization during the process. It, it comes to light very obviously who are the innovative champions inside of your organization. Um, we create opportunities to adjust the organization to support innovation better, determine programs that can be implemented to support ongoing innovation. So culture change is not an event, it's something that you have to support and keep supporting. Um, we build a roadmap of potential initiatives that come right from the utopian future comic books that the organization built for itself. So you get that instant buy-in. Um, probably one of the best testimonials we got is from somebody in Bulgaria that was involved in the process who said that, uh, you know, as a former communist country, many people were a bit afraid to talk about their ideas. The day after the sci-fi hive, the water cooler talk in the airports was all about what could we do better? What could we change? And what could we do around, you know, and sharing ideas of the water cooler? So it shifted their culture overnight. 
then you have to support and feed that culture going forward. And most of all, most of all it inspires imaginations and it creates believers of all of your people in your organization and then starts transforming your organization overnight. So I'll open it up to any questions. Um, as you can see from some of the testimonials, it's truly a transformative experience for everyone that's involved. It kickstarts that transformational innovation in any organization, and it helps you get that vision for, and, and, and thinking 20 years out, it breaks down some of the barriers and bias, and science fiction does that as well, because so people think, well, this isn't real, um, so we can just think way out there. And, and then as part of that results, we start to show them, okay, here, here's your 20 year vision that you thought wasn't real, but technology is moving a lot faster than, than you think. And here's where you can actually be in, and actually get to that vision in five years and show them that it's not as, as far off as you might think that it's actually closer than you think. Yeah. Uh, questions. Yeah, that's great. Ken. Um, I'm standing up because I think it's, it's more energy in, in the room. Um, well, first, uh, total believer of everything you shared today. Um, you know, if you can't imagine the future, you can't create the future, uh, getting the worst brains together to talk about it and, you know, collision of ideas and making sure that you got all those people together. And then somewhere in your storyboarding and visualization in a very accessible way, who doesn't like comics? Who doesn't like comics? It's fantastic uh, in terms of what you're talking about. So I, I thought it was really nice what you, what you guys have done. I've got a couple of questions to get started and make sure the other audience members can put questions in the chat as well, or put their hands up if they want to ask a question. Um, we, we, we in the Jimmy Think Tank experienced something similar as we hit COVID and we moved to a virtual environment. And this is where the Think Tank came about, where almost like two to 300 people around the world would get together every Tuesday, or every Wednesday to talk about COVID. And that was the first part of the Jimmy Think Tank. And then from there, we went back to doing other things. Um, the challenge with Zoom environments this is a big room environment, you know, where people sit around tables and have posters on the wall. And now trying to bring this into the screen environments where people can go get a coffee or go watch Netflix at the same time, accountabilities and all that. Um, I saw some gamification that you introduced to make sure people would be compliant. But what are the what are the challenges that you're facing or the or the techniques that you're using that guarantees uh, compliance and when you ask 10, 20, 30 people to work on a on a hive or on a, or work in a in a in a swarm, that yeah. they are actually really engaged and active. So just just thoughts on yeah. that. So you know what? And and surprisingly, and it's surprised us actually as well, it's not something that we've ever actually run into. Um like what we really end up getting is these these rooms of very very diverse people and once they start collaborating it really starts to grow and it gets exciting and we actually have a hard time pulling them back out of their hive rooms into the main rooms they generally they they just want to keep working and working um and here's a good example we did a, a global future of healthcare sci-fi hive so we had people from 18 different countries um and I can't remember, like it was an eight hour long event. And I believe it was New Year's Eve in Dubai and uh, in parts of Asia. And we had people who basically skipped New Year's Eve and worked through the night uh, on the future of healthcare sci-fi hive. And so the, the combination of bringing in all these different ages, genders, and different experiences together into a room to talk about something that they're passionate about, uh, and giving them the opportunity to to you know just be free and the the thought that there's there's no stupid ideas that everything's crazy ideas are what we're looking for it can be anything and really freeing them from their barriers yep. and the science fiction really helps that right so we we get them thinking you know it, it doesn't have to be real it has to be grounded in science it, it can't be magic right but um it frees a lot of barriers and it becomes this really exciting thing where they're just they're creating something new which is yeah. you know it's part of what our brain chemistry requires and part of what our genetics requires but we don't get to do it very often so we create this uh, almost a, a child play space and we allow adults to be children again and and they really enjoy it and so we engagement comes almost automatically with it 
um, in municipality settings. So we've done some with municipalities and large groups of municipalities. Um, we usually start with a really, really, really big group. And, and that's the other thing that we can do in an engagement, an online engagement is hundreds of people, which there's not a lot of engagements that, that allow that. Um, but in a municipal environment, we tend to get people that drop off during the exploration phase, but all of the people that remain are very engaged. And Perfect. so, so through that, so, um, but in, generally in an organization where we have really good top level support, people show up because they have to at the start, um, as, as part of the corporation. But by the time we're into the, you know, the phase where we're collaborating and developing out a dream, they're totally engaged. No, perfect. So, so just maybe I'll, I'll keep on summarizing learnings for all of us. I think what I'm hearing is um, on one side, it's fun. It's exciting. You're letting yeah. people be kids again and, 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 and therefore they enjoy it. So they, they'll stick around on one side. On the other side, senior support, if they're present, then people will also stick around because they want to be noticed by the senior person that they were there. So you got to put pressure from the top, make it engaging and fun for sure. I want to share one thing. Um, I, I, I worked in Motorola in the, in the 90s. And this is where we would watch science fiction also, a lot of Star Trek. And our senior executives would tell us, what did you see in Star Trek that we should make real? And that's where the flip phone comes along, the flat screen TVs came along, the RFIDs came, and the remote monitoring of health, the lithium ion battery, all of those were visualized already in science fiction. Mm -hmm. And then, but the, but the thing was our engineers were really good. They had competencies to be able to say, I think I can make that real. And that was the combination of imagination with competency and capability. Um, inside this hive, um, what are you doing to make sure the capability allows you to form teams and those teams then take action on those insights that you're generating? I'm very curious about how you are connecting those two things together. Yeah, and it's so... It's it's really about creating the first part, the sci-fi hive is is that vision, right, of where you want to go and the exploration and turning that exploration into something, a story that can create believers out of disbelievers. Uh, but then you follow that up and, and we overlay it with um, the, with the open exo sprint model, but any agile model could work. Um, so you develop out the initiative. So there's the first part, which is the creation of the vision. And then after that, we work with the organization to develop initiatives and teams that can actually make those visions come through. Um, so the results session, what we require at the results session is you kick off uh, initiatives and teams. So it's usually a big event. Um, kick off initiatives and teams that are going to make some of those things real and really look at a, uh, an iterative process to get there. So you got a 20 year vision, how are we gonna get there in five years? But what can we do in the next week to get closer, right? Um, we also look at if there's some organizational change that needs to happen, we unveil that. If there's any programs to keep the cultural or the innovative thinking going, we kick off that. So that results event is very important. It's where you start to show the organization that you know what they dreamed up, is going to be real and then you've got to stick with that and keep iterating towards that and and you have to shift that culture and that innovative thinking as a whole because many people in organizations are afraid to fail and so you have to and that's why we really focus on that iterative approach and shifting the culture to there's no fails there's only learnings and um you know when when something doesn't happen the way you expect it, it's just a chance to pivot and adapt. And, and so it's all about shifting that culture as a whole so that everybody knows that you are working towards that vision that they create because they bought in. The change management happens very quickly because they bought in, they created the vision. So yeah. now you have to show them that you're serious about actually getting there. Ken, this, this is great. Um, I'm going to be a little skeptical. So just take this thing with a say. It will be good to, to, to talk about this. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I go back and forth in my thinking that we can make everybody an innovator. And then sometimes I say, I don't think that's possible. I think there's a certain percentage of people who are truly innovators. And I go back and forth because we want to train as many people on this idea. Um, let, let me explain. 
today we are making everything easier and easier. So I teach in the business school and we teach students, MBA students on how to write a business plan, how to do a pitch, how to do a prototype, how to do an MVP. And now we've got almost 100 students who at the first day of class, I asked them, how many of you want to be entrepreneurs? They've all put their hands up. By the end of the year, I asked how many of you are entrepreneurs and two or three will put their hands up and saying, I've got my business plan, I'm working on it. And most of them will go find jobs. So what we have done is they know how to pitch, they know how to do things because we give them tools. And I saw beautiful tools of videos of the future. I saw this really nice stuff. You also made it so easy to write a storyline. You made it so easy for so that they, when they stand out, they, they almost look credible as if they own it with certain amount of passion or whatever. But I don't believe they own it. I don't believe they own enough of it to take action to create what's after that. And I don't know what your experience has been as you've done all so many of these hives of individuals who get standing, they look beautiful presenting that's that comic. And yet then you say, I'm not sure that person is going to take the next step. So just, just help me. What do you think? What's your thoughts on that? And I, I don't mind you disagreeing with me at all. No, I, I agree that not everybody is an innovator, but it's it's important to also to have a large portion of your organization involved in the process because part of it is just organizational change management. Um, and not only do the people who will actually move it to fruition have to believe the story, but the people around that within your organization have to believe in that future as well, or they'll become barriers very quickly to getting there. So it's not just about supporting the innovation, it's about supporting the whole organization to believe in where the organization is going. Um, so, so that's part of it. And then the other part of it I mentioned earlier, you have to support the process of getting there. Now, the, the thing that we do in the hives is we really promote that the story and the ideas are not one person's. It's the whole team story and it's the whole team's ideas. And we promote like if somebody throws an idea on that futurescaping board, feel free to edit it and adjust it and add to it because it's the team story. Nobody owns the story. Um, and, and so it's all about bringing the whole organization along, but then you've got to support some process or some team or somebody to make it to fruition. It doesn't necessarily have to be the person who wrote the story, but the person who wrote the story has to see that it is actually moving forward, that the executive do believe in the story. And you know what, they, they'll be a champion for it, even if they're not involved in it. And it, it, so it's really about creating these champions of change because technology is not going to slow down your organization. You know, if it, if it's anything, it's people that like you have to change people's minds. And that's what it's all about is bringing the people along so they don't become barriers to change. I love it. Ken, let me, let me, yeah. let me just make sure I summarize what I think I heard. I think there were some insights in that for me anyway, which is um, that storyboard, the story, the concept brief of whatever it is. It's not an individual. It's a collection of two, three, four, five people who put it together. And as a result of it, you got not only a concept built by four or five people, but also four or five believers, of which hopefully one's a sponsor, hopefully one's a senior level person, maybe one's got an engineer in there, maybe one's got a maybe a marketeer in there. And so you've actually built the team by they, them carrying the story together as a concept. So, uh, and, and therefore, if any one of them gives up, there's still another four or five people who might continue pushing it forward. Well, we, we also, in between each of those sessions, we remember we bring everybody back to the swarm room and we share. And, and you know, they, we say the story is open to anything, but we do see it a little bit, right, with where technology is going, where business models are going and things like that. And truly, by the end, the stories do end up um, on a similar path and a similar stream because they've cross-collaborated the whole time. Because whenever they come back to the main swarm room, they share components of their story. And so it becomes an organizational story or a set of organizational stories of what they want their future to be. And, and then you've got believers across the whole organization. And then you use that comic. The other thing about science fiction comics is they suspend disbelief in the reader as well. So you continue to use that as a marketing tool to continue to drive the organization forward. I love it. Um, Ken, something about team selection and people who should come to the event. Do you have guidance on what makes a good hive or a good swarm? 
uh, well, what are what's the characteristics of these individuals, and 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 how how are they facilitated? Yeah, and and so we usually we work with the executive team to try and make us diverse groups. So mix a group from across the organization, get different ages, different genders, you know, um, different nationalities, get them all together, different skill sets and levels. We want frontline people with executives. So really, really good mix um, inside of a room. And especially we want the people involved who are, we know will be barriers and naysayers, right? Um, and it's a good way to really start bringing them over uh, and getting them thinking differently. It, for example, we did one healthcare, uh, one in the healthcare industry. And um, about halfway through, one of the, the directors um, who was kind of responsible for kicking it off, said you know when the ceo came to me and said we're doing this i thought it was stupid and a waste of time yeah and then halfway through she's like but you know what on the weekend i'm watching cartoons with my granddaughter and i saw things in the cartoon that i was like you know i think we could do that and so it shifted her thinking and she would have been a naysayer to any innovation and change, or she would have been a barrier to innovation and change in that organization, but the process got her thinking differently about what the future could be. Ken, this is great. What you're really doing is saying, hey guys, there are different places for look for ideas, there are different places for triggering uh, dots so you can connect them together in new and different ways. And science fiction certainly provides that, cartoons provides that, through comics provide that. They're all futuristic stuff. I have a question in terms of um, when you got this, people were working on 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 ideas and things together. Um, is there a risk now that people will use something like ChatGPT or or something else to just say, "Give me the answer," and they kind of prompt it correctly, and out comes a good enough answer? I, I use the word "good enough answer" that impresses the peers. But there's no ownership of it because ChatGPT owns it really, and it's not yours. And therefore, you disassociated the passion or the creative energy of the psychology of creation. So I'm 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 very concerned how ChatGPT has been used in MBA classes now by yeah. students, and they look brilliant and the answer they look good enough. We are not critical, and and then you ask them, do you own it, and they don't own it. Yeah. It's funny because we've been having some discussion in the open exo community because um, a few people have said you should build chat GPT into the platform <laughs> um, and and that's not that's definitely not something we want but I really don't care if they use chat GPT to start their thinking because chat GPT is going to get them thinking about different things but the fact that we have them in a room you know for eight hours collaborating on their ideas there that idea is never going to be exactly what chat gpt in and if they all go to chat gpt and they all start there that collaboration is going to shift that idea start merging some of the thoughts together and in the end it's going to be their idea um and so so i'm i'm really sway away from building that into the platform because i want them to collaborate and um we do also bring in so we have the queen bee in the room who's from the organization, but we've taught them how to use the platform and, and taught them how to facilitate and to try and keep pulling more and more out of the participants. And we also bring in experts in a, in a lot of cases. So when we did the Bulgaria airports, for instance, we brought a, um, a an expert in space travel and expert in kind of where is where is space travel going to talk about things like starports and, and Bulgaria is, airports are actually looking at building a, a starport, a landing port in the Black Sea because of that. And so you bring in experts as well to, to expand their thinking. So the collaboration that's required to participate um, is, is something that will, you know, force them to talk about their ideas. And even if it's not theirs, so even if they stole it from G GTP, they're going to have to know enough to talk about it and collaborate on it with the other people and get challenged as well on the ideas. Um, Ken, you are you are certifying people onto your platform, yeah. and I'm 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 hoping I'm assuming that who whoever you're certifying 
understands what is the right mix of people to invite uh, to, to, to the hive or the, or the swarm so that you get the diversity that goes allows you to go wide enough or far, far enough. And um, otherwise, there's a natural tendency to say, us five, let's just do the hive. And the five of us are kind of looking like we look the same, we act the same, we behave the same. And, yeah. the, and so uh, how, 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 how are you going to make sure that people don't take a shortcut and just get things out versus the real there's yeah. hard work here. There's hard work of bringing the right people, hard work in facilitating them, hard work in making sure it's different, better, and different than chat GPT. Um, all the cartoon you make is quality or interesting or compelling. I'm using all these kind of words, which we 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 we, are, we think is important. How do you do that? Yeah, and, and so it's it's really active participation by the beekeeper as well. So the beekeeper is visiting the rooms and and helping facilitate the conversation, making sure the conversation is happening and collaboration is happening. Now, as far as picking teams, the 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 uh, participants can't pick their own team. So part of the platform, the team gets set up if you saw me dropping people into Hive 1 or whatever, Hive 2. And so we usually, in a corporate environment, we work with the executives to help pick the teams or with the directors and help make sure we're getting a good mix of, of teams involved. Um, and, and we've done that in a municipal settings as well, making sure that we're, we're mixing up the teams appropriately. And so the teams are well thought out who's going to be participating in a team to make sure that you get a mix from all over the organization. Um, and then just constant facilitation. So it's it's not just facilitation in the swarm room. When they go to the hive rooms, we're bouncing around from all the hive rooms. And if we hear something from one side room, we'll actually go tell the other side room, hey, here's a cool idea. And so we cross pollinate ideas the whole time. And we're watching as well uh, as a facilitator or a beekeeper. It's your job to also watch for the stars in the organization. And there's always several standouts in every organization. And it's usually quite surprising to the executive who it is. Um, and because we, we see right away who it is that's really passionate and, and really innovative in, inside of these and um, and we track that as we go along and share that with the executives. And those are usually the people that end up being part of the team that's going to implement those solutions, so those initiatives. Excellent. Ken, we're coming to the end of our time. And I wanted to give you maybe a minute uh, at the end to basically say, here's what it is, collaborate with me uh, and, and, and talk to the full audience out there. Um, but I just wanted to first, um, I'll just summarize what I learned today and then I'll give you, give you the floor. You'll have the last minute. Um, what's happening out there is people are looking for new ideas, right? Different types of ideas. And they got to be different. And science fiction is one way to unanchor from the present into the future. And you can do anything. You can imagine anything. You're allowed to think freely. And in that free world, the ideas are different than the ones that you're anchored to the present. And, and what these guys are doing is something about unanchoring your brain and your capabilities and your competencies to say anything's possible. And then from there, working with teams to try and say, okay, what's the story look like? How do we make this thing understandable to the rest of you guys? There's another process in here which makes it makes that uh, understandable and accessible to everybody else. And in between, they're using teams to make sure that this thing will carry forward for diversity of ideas, but also for the execution later on. Both things are in place is what we're saying. And this technology platform is very powerful because now you can connect anybody anywhere at any time, hopefully with the same time zones. But it doesn't matter. If people yeah. are excited, they'll show up. And so technology has now shifted the way we used to work. Big classrooms is how we used to work. Now we can work in virtual rooms anywhere. And behind the ideas, they're not different. We need people. We need diverse people uh, in everything we do. And we need facilitators. People who can guide you through the journey because there's a tendency to take shortcuts. There's a tendency not to do work as hard sometimes and to say, is it really good? Is it really good? Is it really good? And that's, that's what this platform is. And um, I really encourage people to think about um, ways to shortcut. It tells you what's next, what else, and it allows you to seize the moment. So with that, Ken, I give you the final minute. Tell us yeah. your guidance to everybody else. Yeah, I mean, so... So sci-fi hive and really transforming an organization, 
has nothing to do with technology and, and things like that. It's about your people, right? Um, and so one of the things, though, that you may notice is as somebody becomes expert, it's much harder for them to think outside the box. Like I always say, if you, if you ask a plumber for a lamp, it's probably going to be made out of copper. Um, and so that's why we would really focus on getting very diverse groups together. So within your organization, you know, get as many people together as you can and mix up the groups because the ideas that are going to shift your world are probably not going to come from your experts. They're going to come from a frontline person or, or who knows, they may even come from your janitor. Um, but you've got to be listening to those ideas and and building upon the ideas. So by mixing an engineer with your frontline staff, with your janitor, you're giving those frontline staff and the janitor access to skill sets to help them expand out that idea into something real. Um, that's not something they're going to have access to every day. And you're going to create believers across your organization in this future vision. And, and then it's all about supporting that vision. So the sci-fi has the first part of getting the people change management done, get the people on board with what the future could be, reducing those barriers that happen with change to bring your people along, and then make sure you support the initiatives to move that forward. You know, I, I, I titled this the Kickstarting uh, Innovation Culture, and that's what it is. It's a massive kickstart to that innovation culture but you still have to feed and support that culture. Culture doesn't change in an event. Um, it starts to change in the event, and then you have to support that going forward. So, um, you know, really using Sci-Fi Hive as the beginning of, of your change, and then building on top of that, whether it's, you know, an agile methodology. We use the XO Sprint from OpenXO um, to really drive forward those initiatives and start shifting the organization. So it's all about kicking off massive change and then supporting that change going forward. Excellent, Ken. Thank you very much for being on our GB Think Tank. Um, I, I believe our audience learned a lot. Um, audience is made up of people from around the world. Please reach out directly to Ken to learn more about how Sci-Fi High works and how we can collaborate with him directly. Uh, and as he said, he's very global and he's very accessible to be able to do things anywhere at any time. So with that, thank you very much. And let's thank you. We'll bring the Jimmy Think Tank meeting to the end. Uh, we'll meet again next week and we'll be talking about innovation management, future trends, or what's going on in some part of the world on innovation. Tune in again next week. Remember, our mission remains the same. We are, our mission is to train and certify a million people on innovation. And if we can accomplish that, no problem in the planet can be not be solved. And therefore, the only way we're going to get there is together. So our mantra is together we can and we will. Thank you very much.